Hey, 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 here we are in my happy place with Fresco, Adobe Fresco. Folks, it's been a while since we've done a nice little live stream with Let's Go Fresco, so we're back, and I'm glad that you're here to join me. Remember, like I always uh, love to remind people, Adobe Fresco is kind of a special app, um, and uh, it just needs a little bit more love because people don't know that we update it every four to six weeks. That's crazy, folks. You talk about a crazy update schedule. Every four to six weeks, new version of Fresco just magically appears there for you. Oh, and did I mention it's a free app? It's a free app. So you can't go wrong. You like illustration, you like drawing and painting? Well, here you go. So I'm here to talk to you today about vector brushes. We're talking about the outline and jitter brushes. These are special vector brushes that only exist in good old Adobe Fresco. We're gonna do some monster drawing with these. We're gonna have some fun. We're just gonna draw today. We're gonna to talk about vector brushes, talk about vector art, and just have a grand old time together. So glad you are here. And let's say hi to some folks in the chat. Remember, if you're watching over on YouTube or Twitter or thereabouts, you are missing out on a chat that is alive with me. So you can ask me questions, we can have discussions, we can tell really dumb dad jokes. Uh, those are my favorite. Let's say hi, Laura. What's up, Laura? Nice to see you. I see Clarissa is here. Emmanuel's here. Emmanuel just downloaded Fresco, folks, and he is a very well-known and uh, well-published, I should say, prolific children's book uh, illustrator as well as illustrator in general. Thank you for being here. Colby's here. What's up? Uh, Sean, I see. Cody Bear, nice to see you as well. Did I say hi to Steve? I can't remember. Hey, Steve. Leah or Leah. Don't want to get the names wrong. Folks, thanks for being here. Um, let's dive right in. It's time to go. Here we go. Fresco time. Okay, now, um, I love Fresco. Oh, these are the kind of comments I like to hear. Well, I'm right there with you. I love Fresco as well. Um, just noticing that my, my camera is, is off, uh, but that's okay. You don't need to see my face. You just have to hear my voice while I walk you through what's going on here on the screen. Follow the blue dots. See that? Okay, I've turned on my touch uh, sensor so you can see what's going on. Now, this is, of course, gonna make it a little difficult for me to draw for you, but hey, that's okay, all right? Yeah, Cody, I see the camera isn't working. I see that as well. Um, it is a brand new camera, so, you know, oh well. I'll work on that later. Um, we have a document open here in Fresco, and I'm going to be using vector brushes today. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Fresco, uh, there are three categories of brushes, okay? We have pixel brushes up here in the top left. Now, those are basically Photoshop brushes. You're familiar with Photoshop brushes, right? And Photoshop brushes involve, uh, uh, include, excuse me, 2,000 and then some brushes that you can grab right down here where it says add brushes, discover new brushes. Oh my gosh, here it is. The mother load, all the brushes, okay? Including all the updates every quarter that I make for you all, because I love you. Uh, you can grab them all here. You just say add, and when you tap on add, guess what? It adds them right here in all your libraries, okay? Just add the library and you're good to go, all right? Pretty darn nice. Um, but also, for those of you who have ABR files, and you just want to import your ABR files, your other brushes, and you want to import them that way, maybe you have them saved um, in the cloud or you have them saved, you know, with uh, Dropbox or whatever, um, maybe on your device, you go to add brushes and you say import from files, okay? And that's how you do that, all right? So you're good to go with brushes. Now, those are all the Photoshop brushes. Here we have the live brushes. If you've never used Fresco before, that includes watercolors and oils. And you say, what's so special about that? Well, for example, with the watercolors, I'll show you what's so special about it. Use a bunch of paint, a bunch of water. I throw some color down. Oh, look at that. The paint moves and flows, so lovely. Uh, you grab another color, you mix that in there, and voila. Okay, so you have paint that stays wet. And when I mean, uh, when I say stays wet, what I mean is if I come back to this file a year after I save it, 
Don't worry, the paint is still wet. You can always dry it if you want. You can tap on the layer and you can say dry layer down here at the bottom, okay? Uh, but you don't have to, you can keep it wet. You can add a new layer, right? We're in a digital painting environment. There are no layer limits in Fresco. I can do another couple of brush strokes up here on a separate layer, right? Maybe I add some wet spatter, why not? It's fun, just do some of that. Okay, look at that. And if I want to, I can merge the layers, right? And then I can grab another soft brush and I can start painting these little bits and pieces together. See that? So, you know, these are kinds of things you can't do with traditional media on paper. We're cheating in a sense, but it's the best, right? So watercolors are there. You've got your oils in there as well. Nice, chunky, thick oils. They're gonna get thicker, by the way, in the very near future. Near future. We're working on that um, as we speak. But yeah, how much do you want the paint to mix and how thick do you want the paint to be? And now you're in business. There you go, okay? Nice, ooey gooey oils. Isn't that fun? All right, so you've got what you need right there. But today, what we're talking about are the infinitely scalable, resolution independent vector brushes, right? And here they are. Ah, oh, recent. Well, don't worry about that. Basic, jitter, manga, oh, how nice, and outline brushes. Today, we're focusing on the jitter and the outline brushes, folks, okay? Because these were recently added, and I think it's worth talking about them a little bit. Now, as you know, uh, vector brushes are infinitely scalable. So in the basic category, I'll just grab a vector round brush, select black as the color, keep things simple. And we'll just go here and we'll draw a little, little face here for you. All right, nothing too fancy, nothing too exciting. All right, now, we draw this and we say, okay, what's so, what's so special about vector brushes? This is what's so special about vector brushes. I'm gonna zoom in at 12,800% and there's no pixelation because again, infinitely scalable. That's what that means, okay? So if this is the kind of thing that matters to you, if your art has to be infinitely scalable, maybe you're drawing something for a logo, maybe you're drawing something that has to be um, used for different applications. Sometimes it's gonna be small, sometimes it's gonna be printed on the side of a building, I don't know. Um, maybe on a Mack truck, draw it with vector brushes and you don't have to worry about uh, pixelation, okay? Resolution independence, that's what you want here. Oh, by the way, look at this. I drew some of the hair crossing over where the neck meets the chin and it's a shame, isn't it? I don't have to go in there and erase it and I have to be really precise. And, oh, wait a second, no I don't because of this little guy, my touch modifier. Well, what's that, Kyle? Well, I'll show you. Check this out. Double tap on the touch modifier and tap once more. I do that with my finger, and now I'm in vector trimming mode, which means I simply draw through the area I don't want, and it magically vanishes perfectly. Look at that, it's gone. That's what vector trimming is. Isn't that wonderful? What about this eyebrow over here? Goodbye. See that? What about this line over here? Goodbye. Okay, see what I'm talking about? This is vector trimming. This will save you a lot of time and energy. This is an amazing feature. This is the kind of thing that makes it really special to use these vector brushes and to be able to get precise, even if you draw sloppy. Okay? Beautiful. Double tap again, and we're back to normal with our little touch modifier. I keep mine down at the bottom right because I'm a lefty. So when I'm drawing, I have my right thumb in the bottom right corner of my iPad ready to go and I can just activate the touch modifier as needed. Okay. All right, we'll clear this away, select the layer, clear layer, bye-bye, and we're gonna start drawing some monsters. Let's take a look at the brushes we're using today. Now, here are all the basic brushes. You can enjoy those, play with, play with those, but we're gonna check out jitter brushes. Alrighty, starting with light jitter. Now, normally when you think of jitter of any kind, you think of that being something that is only applied to pixel brushes or Photoshop brushes, but no more, that is no more the case. Let's look at this, I'm gonna zoom in on this. Oh, look at that line. It has a little bit of random variation in the diameter of the stroke just occurring naturally. See that? How about that? Now that's what happens with the jitter brushes, okay? 
And they're also responsive to pressure for diameter. So if I do a light amount of pressure and then a heavy amount of pressure, I can go thin to thick and still retain those jitter properties. Very nice. Umicorn's here. What's up, Umicorn? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Clever. Hello, hello. Melissa says, I'm a lefty too. Oh, good. I'm glad you're a lefty. Nice to meet another lefty. By the way, as a fellow lefty, you know that we're in our right minds. And in addition to that, do you ever have any trouble finding a left-handed hammer at the hardware store? I do. All right, we're going to clear this away for a minute. And let's check out the median jitter. Well, as you'd expect, more jitter, right? So, of course, it goes without saying that the heavy jitter is going to have a bunch of it. Let me reset that to where it belongs. There we go. That's my heavy jitter baby right there. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Now, you notice I reset the brush down here. Now, why did I do that? Because these brushes, along with every other vector brush, can be modified and edited to your heart's content to make the effect exactly what you need. All right, so we open our brush settings panel and look at all these options. Holy cow, it's a little overwhelming, but let's just look at this, okay? Um, roundness of the brush, what does that mean? This means we are either taking a perfect circle for our stamp, it's a vector brush, or we're um, compressing it into an oval. So you notice that the roundness for this brush is actually not perfectly circular to begin with, okay? It's set at 76%, but you could change that as well, right? You can make that even more ovular, even more squished, if you wish. And that will, of course, change the appearance of the line as you draw. See that? Um, so you can totally mess around with this and get what you like and fiddle around with these settings. Um, the angle, what does that do? Okay, well, we can change that. Now, remember, if this is more of a um, an oval, right, you can really change how things are going to look by changing the angle of the brush. All righty. So it can be more of a subtle kind of a jitter like this, right? We'll go back to our brush settings and we'll make this angle at 180 degrees even more subtle. Uh-huh. But what if we push it to something like 90 degrees? Okay, so it's kind of sitting straight up. Very different. All right. So lots to play with there. We'll reset it again. And let's take a look at pressure dynamics. Here we have a setting of 100% for pressure. This is going to affect the diameter. Um, this means that if I use very light pressure, I'll get a very small, thin line. And if I use heavy pressure, I'm going to get a thicker line. Now, you can adjust this down. Let's say I just put it at 25%. What this means is that as I draw, okay, I'm going to get less variation in the diameter of the stroke, okay? So there are times when you're gonna to wanna to have less diameter uh, adjustment or variation. There are times when you will. Easy to adjust, go to pressure dynamics, adjust that, okay? You can also simply turn it off altogether. All right, now what else do we have here? Let's take a look at under velocity dynamics. Velocity dynamics allow you to adjust the diameter of the brush based on the speed at which you are drawing. So if I set that to, for example, 100%, okay? Drawing slowly, thinner line. Acceleration, thicker line. Why would you want something like this? Well, I'll tell you why. You may be a lettering artist, and there may be times where you're doing a slow upstroke and a fast downstroke, okay? If that's what you want to have happen, you want it to be fast on the, on the downstroke, you want it to be fast and you want it to be fatter, go for it. But if you want to do the opposite, just reverse your dynamics. So now, Moving slowly is going to be thicker. Moving quickly, whoops, I got a zip line there. Slowly, quickly, slowly, quickly, slowly, quickly. So you have a lot of control over pretty much every aspect of the brush behavior and appearance, okay? So put that back down to uh, zero. And then let's head on back. And let's take a look at shape and outline. Now for jitter brushes, of course, this is a very important set of settings here. Hey, Bruce, nice to see you. What's up? Bliss is here. All right, jitter distance. The greater the distance, the less noticeable the jitter. See that? You can look at the preview right up here. All righty. 
right there. So we put a little less distance here. This is heavy jitter after all, right? And then the size of the jitter, of course. The less, uh, the lower the number for the size, of course, the less jitter you're gonna notice. The higher you put that, the bigger the distance, uh, the bigger the variation probably, uh, pardon me, there you go. So look, I can have a brush that does just a very, very bare minimum of jitter right there if I want. Just gives it a little more, more of a natural kind of a quality to it, right? We'll reset it again. And um, we haven't even looked at tilt and rotation. If I were to apply tilt and rotation here, basically uh, tilting my stylus away from perpendicular, okay, to the, to the uh, canvas is gonna influence the direction and the uh, diameter of the jitter brush. Now I'll make it a lot larger and this should become much more apparent here. So more perpendicular, less perpendicular. See what I mean? So here I'm drawing more parallel to my canvas. Here, more perpendicular. Okay? Very interesting effects can be had there as well. All right, so we'll reset it one more time. And I think we've covered there pretty much what you can do with the jitter brushes. We're gonna head on over now to the outline brushes. Very special category, there are 13 presets here to play with. Okay, we've kind of thought of all the basics so that you don't have to make a lot of adjustments, all right? Hey Kathleen, thanks for joining us. Um, light outline, light outline. Look at this. Notice what happens as I cross over an area where I've already drawn. The inside, the interior of the stroke remains hollow, empty, which means I could grab another color and I could simply tap and fill it like this. Very nice for lettering artists, very nice for effects, very nice for just quickly drawing an area and then filling it uh, with color like so. Um, but that really is, that really is nice. Uh, back to the brush itself. Let's go back here and let's see what else we have. Of course, medium outline, self-explanatory, heavy outline. These are all pretty self-explanatory, okay? Heavier outline. The brushes can get really big. Look how big this can get, okay? So you can imagine how cool it would be to work with these larger brushes, to combine them, to do all kinds of things with vector trimming. If I come through here and just start trimming away, right? I have all this control over how stuff works, right? can do some pretty funky stuff with vector trimming here. Look at that. All right, so get creative with that. Get creative with that, all right? And then what else do we have? We have our light pressure outline, etc. Now these respond to pen pressure for, you guessed it, diameter, okay? Level up fresco, that's right, Melissa. This is definitely where, where we are. We're lever leveling up here. So I can control the diameter there with pressure. See that? And notice that not only the overall diameter of the stroke gets smaller with lighter pressure, but also the weight of the outline. See how that's influenced by the pressure as well? Very cool, very cool. We have some settings for those, medium and heavy, and then we have tapers, beginning tapers, end tapers, you guessed it, end taper means tapers at the end, right? No matter what you do, it's gonna happen. And once again, I can do stuff like this. Just cut through, cut through, cut through, cut through. Right? That's pretty cool. That's our vector trimming in action. Um, and then we even have jitter outline brushes. And again, these are 100% customizable, so you can adjust the jitter like you do with the regular jitter brushes. All of that can be taken care of. Very nice. All right. And then here we get to some really interesting ones, the chisel fixed outline, the chisel tilt outline, and the chisel pressure outline. Now again, for the, those fans of lettering, okay, you can play with these. And you can do your lettering, okay? You can also come in here, you can adjust the angle, right? So we'll go to a nice 35. And we'll make the brush bigger. Adobe. Okay, we grab some red and 
fill it just like that. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So, lettering artists, I know you'll have some fun with these. And don't forget to use smoothing, okay? Smoothing will help you. It's like a, a little assistant there when you're drawing to help how you are able to make smooth, clean, nice curve, linear lines, okay? This will help you with that. Um, makes a big difference. If you don't have smoothing turned on, you'll know it. Um, and by the way, we got some requests to increase the amount of smoothing that's available in, in the range here. And uh, we are, we heard ya, and we're gonna make it happen. So stay tuned for more of that, okay? Stay tuned for more of that. Uh, Manuel had a question, how easy does this export to Illustrator? Check it out, you can do it a couple ways. You just go like this. Open a copy, Illustrator for iPad or desktop. That'll just basically immediately open it up right there on your desktop, it'll send it straight away and open it right there in the app if you have it open. If you have it on the iPad, if you have um, Illustrator open on the iPad, it'll just open it right up for you um, and you can continue working on it from there. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also export as a PDF, uh, there, but there's lots of ways to, to uh, make that work. So. Yes, very nice. All right, so the time has come to draw. Let's go to our jitter brushes here. I'm gonna use the medium jitter for now, I think. Let's see how that feels. Yeah, why not? That feels pretty good. And we're gonna draw some monsters. Okay, here we go. Well, now, my goal today is in drawing these creatures, to have a lot of personality, all right? A lot of personality. That's what we're looking for. And one of the great things about jitter brushes is that they do a lot of that heavy lifting for you. It's There's personality in the line itself, right? The lines themselves really add a lot of energy and personality. And this is one of the wonderful things about it. You don't have to do too much. All right. That variety, that variation that you get in every little brush stroke, I think goes such a long way. If I were just doing this with a brush that had a regular predictable line weight um, all the way through the stroke, I don't think it would be as exciting as fun. Less personality. Can the speed of drawing a line be increased when smoothing is increased, says Melissa. Um, no, but I love that idea and I think it, it should be an option. That's what I think. Um, I think it's a great idea. I really do. I think it's a great idea. All right, so. Just, we're just making shapes here. And we're gonna have fun with this. This is what I like. For stuff like this, where you just have to draw lines that are bumping up kind of against each other here and there, but also are adding more sort of a textural or pattern-like element. It's so nice to have a bit of variety. And again, this is the kind of thing, typically with vector brushes, that you just don't usually get. Um, and I think that's that's what's making these really special, is that you know normally I'd be doing this kind of thing with, with pixel brushes, uh, but to be able to do this with vector brushes really makes, makes a world of difference, I think. That's what I say. Yeah, vintage comics, says Cody. Yes, I agree. I agree. This does have that kind of quality to it. Um, you know, there was a, a process that Andy Warhol used when he was drawing. He did these advertising drawings, and I saw some originals uh, in San Francisco at the, the MoMA there. They were such great drawings. I loved them. Um, 
not a huge fan of Warhol's work with the, the silk screening and all that kind of, you know, automated art kind of stuff, but the drawings he did when he was working for advertising, um, I really love. And they do have, a lot of those drawings do have uh, this sort of a quality to them, you know, and you can do this sort of scribbly back and forth kind of thing, or you can have the line kind of break apart like this, you know? All the stuff you can do just to make it have more personality. Um, but he, he went through some kind of a painstaking process for that, and I don't remember what it was, but somebody one time, um, did a demo of that. I thought maybe I saw it on YouTube, maybe, or uh, where did I see that? Darn it. Maybe somebody else saw the same thing and can can let us know where that was. Um, but it was a cool, it was a cool thing, the way he did it with traditional uh, materials. And what's nice is, of course, now we can get that same sort of effect here. And it's infinitely scalable, right? Isn't that nice? Okay, now, here we go. We're going to do this. We're going to switch our brush to an outline brush. And we're going to use a, a um, light jitter outline brush. And I'm going to adjust the jitter right here under shape and outline. And decrease the distance there a little bit and increase the size of the jitter just a bit. I want it to sort of match up really well with what we're drawing with right here already. That feels about right. I'm gonna increase the, the size of that brush just a little. That feels pretty good. I'll even go ahead and under um, the jitter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna decrease that jitter distance just a bit more and see how that feels. Yeah, that's pretty good. And what I can do is, is I can do this. I can go ahead and make him little horns like that. Now, if I want them to be wider, I simply increase the size of the brush and under shape and outline, I reduce the outline thickness. Look at this. Okay, there we go. This is what's fun, is to be able to go ahead and adjust all these little things. All these little things. Very powerful. Give him some horns there. Now, remember this? Double tap, triple tap. We just go ahead and we get rid of all the stuff we don't need. And I can take, uh, go to my recent brushes. Don't forget about these folks. This is one of those things we announced, oh gosh, three, four months ago, maybe longer when it came out. And it just kind of flew under the radar, flew under the radar. Um, so if I were to go to my recents, I can see not only every single brush I've used in this document thus far, but I see them in the order in which they were used. So I go to my medium jitter again. Now I'm using that brush, okay? And here I can do things like this. I can just kind of draw over here, draw over here. and I can trim away anything that I don't want. Like that. Get really specific with what you want to keep. And on this side here, I can trim stuff away. Come in and overlap right there. And just do that. Now another nice thing to do is to just do this. Add like some little bits of 
sort of texture in there like that. And because this is responding to pen pressure for diameter, right, I can control the size of that line very, very easily. Very easily. Now another weird but in, but kind of fun way to use the the, um, the outline brushes that you may not have thought of. So I'm just going to show you. Maybe you thought of it. I know you're all very clever. Um, is to do stuff like this. I'm going to uh, go to my recents again. And we're going to use that light jitter outline brush. I'm going to make the size just a little smaller here. Test it out here and see how it looks. Cool. And then I'm going to do this. Look at this. I paint inside to hollow out an area. And now he's got a hat. See what I mean? So you can paint inside an area. Go back to my recents, take that medium jitter brush and just kind of come across the top there to finish off that brim. Maybe give it a little band and a little decoration of some kind here. But did you see what I did there, folks? I did it kind of fast. I basically painted an area that I wanted to remain sort of hollow, empty, you know? Um, and I'll do it off to the side again in case you missed it. Here, I'm gonna grab my light jitter outline brush. And I just paint a shape for something that I want to remain hollowed out on the inside, like that. So it's a really interesting way to use the brush is to sort of do this kind of outline painting for specific shapes, right? And you're gonna get different results when you do this than what you typically would get just by drawing the outline. It's, it's kind of an interesting way to work and I think it's really fun. Melissa asks, Kyle, do you think there will be a vector noise brush in the future? Um, I think it's possible, but, but Melissa, you know what I would say is probably a much easier way to sort of make that work. Maybe not, not maybe not easier actually, but, um, and I'm not saying it isn't possible. Sure, I think anything's possible. Um, but in the meantime, what I would say is, you know, create a noise pattern that you like and save it as a vector shape. And that way you can um, make selections anywhere you want in your document and just fill them with that with that noise as needed. Um, that should work quite nicely. So, uh, what's up, Sean? Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's important to to know about vector shapes. And since we are talking about vector brushes today, you know, obviously uh, vector shapes are relevant, and they're right here. All of the shapes I've ever made, you know, um, are right here in, in different libraries. You know, I've got all these these great drawings by my son that we vectorized. He made this group of um, 90 different faces that are all different called faces of dudes. And I turned them into vector shapes. And like if I were to grab uh, any one of those, like this robber guy, just throw them on there. And it's a vector shape, so I can I can scale it, size it, do whatever I want with it. And if I want to fill it with color, I just tap to fill. And it's automatically a vector piece of art there. You can also fill it as a pixel layer if you want. You know, I could create a new layer, and if I tap to fill, it'll ask, do you want this to be pixels? Yeah, sure, now it's pixels. Um, or, you know, you can use it as a mask. Uh, you can make it a selection. You know, grab the watercolors, paint inside that selection. Uh, whoops, I'm using the oils there, my mistake. Go back to the watercolors. And I like doing this because it shows off how fun it is to do like blends inside of uh, a selection, you know, to be able to do stuff like this. You know, how, well, how else could you do this? And what other app could you do what I'm doing right now? Um, the answer is none. Look at that, right? So yeah, vector shape's really powerful. Anything you want to be a vector shape, you just make it a vector shape in Adobe Capture, okay? 
Um, yeah, because that's the that's the uh, power of that. Um, because I, I've done this a million times. I've drawn something with a pixel brush in fresco. And then what I like to do is just go ahead and turn it into a vector shape in case I, in the future I want to use it as vector art. For example, um, I'll hide my little monster here for just a moment and I'll make a new layer. And in my vector shapes, I can come back to um, drawings I've vectorized right here. These are like just a bunch of drawings I've done. They were done with pixel brushes and I turned them into vector shapes. So for my, my picture book agent, for example, um, Chad, this drawing here, this was originally done with pixel brushes. And uh, yeah, I just went ahead and turns it into vector art. So, you know, being able to do that is really cool. And I, as you can see, I played around with the settings there and capture, and I, I like smoothed out the vector art. You can play with smoothing and things like that um, before you export the final shape. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Um, <clears throat> I really don't think a lot of people are aware about of, of uh, vector shapes in Fresco. They're they're so amazing, um, and uh, there are there are even libraries of shapes that come with Fresco, like the Fresco Comics shapes right here. You know, you want to add a little exciting action burst of some kind. You can do it. You can create a selection out of it. Um, whoops, I might have just overdone it there, making a selection out of something this complex. We'll just have to wait now. But in the meantime, I'll talk more about vector shapes. Um, those of you who don't know about Adobe Capture, please download it. It's a free app. Um, this is important. When I say free, I mean like, it really is free. <laughs> no strings attached. Uh, and you can turn things into vector shapes. You can make brushes with it. You can do so many cool things. Um, you can make ribbon brushes. Anybody know what rib ribbon brushes are? They're this cool category of brushes that we have that do stuff like um, I think this will show you. Here you go. Like I made a brush of Conan O'Brien. You know. Um, these are called ribbon brushes, and they're full RGB brushes that you can create in in capture and they have a head a body and a tail you know so you can do funky stuff like this i know conan has a good sense of humor so he'd probably appreciate what i'm doing right now conan if you're listening i know you're not uh yeah reach out to me i'll send you this brush there you go all right yeah so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in, in capture Maybe we should make a whole show about how ribbon brushes are made and play with those here in Fresco. But today we're talking about vector brushes. Back to our little monster, here he is. Okay, and back to our vector brushes. All right. Oops, I'm still using that little one. We'll go to recent, go back to my medium jitter brush. See how great, the recent brushes, I swear. Ugh. It just makes my life so easy. By the way, it's sticky, so you know if you close the document, come back to it in a month, you will know every single brush you used. And it's the thing I have I have happened to me all the time, unfortunately, in Photoshop, where I'm like, oh gosh, which brushes did I use for this? And I open something back up, um, or I want to do something similar to something I've done in the past, but I can't remember exactly which brushes I used. I kind of have a general idea. So being able to do that is so great, just so great. All right, so um, this monster, he's got a nice little hat there. I think he needs to have a little suit. All right. And you'll notice that as I draw off the document, the lines are still visible. See that? With vector brushes, you can draw off of your document and it'll get saved, uh, even though you're, I mean, off the canvas, you know? And um, I think that's something we need to work on with pixel brushes too. I think that'd be a good thing to have. So I know I've mentioned it a couple times 
in meetings to folks. So I'm pretty sure there might be a story for that in our um, on our roadmap. And I think that'd be a pretty nice feature. So it's probably on the way and I just don't know it. Folks, I put out a tweet yesterday at Kyle T. Webster. Please uh, check me out, follow me on Twitter so we can talk. Um, asking folks about fe uh, features that they, if you know, what's the one feature that you would want to have in Fresco um, that would just make your life so much easier, you know, that kind of thing. And I got some good replies, so please check out that thread and, and throw in some suggestions in there. Um, don't throw them in the chat, even though it's like I can read them here. The reason I ask you to put them on Twitter and in that thread is because I'm collecting all of it um, to share with with the team. Because periodically I like to do that, and we like to see what bubbles up to the top, you know. And we sort of prioritize what we're working on based on stuff like that sometimes. So it's good to good to know. All right. Well, so here's our little guy. All right, that's monster number one. Now remember, we are working with vector brushes here. Very easy to fill, tap to fill. I'm gonna just throw some lines in here to connect all these because I'm about to do something fun here. Um, but another cool thing we can do is uh, we could keep our color on a separate layer, of course, right? By using um, reference layer fill. That's a nice thing to do as well. So if you have a drawing that has a lot of open-ended areas, this one does with all the, the hair and all that other stuff, um, you can take advantage of selections if you want to work with that. But just to quickly point out how it works, if I tap on this layer and I say set as reference right here, and then I create another layer underneath it, okay, or anywhere in the document, um, all the color fills I do with my paint bucket tool will now be referencing that line art. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be vector. So by tapping the fill right there, you notice how it automatically worked within the confines of the nose shape that I drew. But again, the, the line art's on a separate layer. So this is gonna save me a ton of time and energy to be able to fill my color, you know, separately, which is what we all like to do anyway. Right, this is a good thing to do. And keep it separate, look at that. Line art, oh, I was just filling on the line art, stupid thing, hang on, there we go. Back to my color layer. There's my line art, there's my color layer, okay? And of course you can do this with pixel brushes as well, right? You can do this with pixel brushes as well. Hey, Emmanuel, that's really nice of you, thanks. It's a, all this drawing needs is the rest of the story and you have a children's book. <laughs> I don't know about that, but that's very kind. Um, now, by the way, uh, the reference layer that you're using, it's not like you can't continue to uh, draw with it. Um, you can, you just keep drawing, do whatever you need. Uh, so, you know, if I wanted to like close these off for the, uh, for the hair and the beard, or whatever, just, you know, if I felt like I wanted to just keep using reference layer fill. Um, and if I want to retain that nice sort of open feel for it, I could just um, color by hand, you know. And I will say that one of the things we're working on is gap detection. So you'll be able to use reference layer fill with gap detection. So you could have open ended bits and pieces in your drawing and it'll still accurately fill in the color where you want it. What do you think about that? It's pretty nice, right? Um, I know I'd use it. So we're going to do this and now it fills in that area right there because I closed it off. Right, I closed it off. Tap, tap, tap. And remember, all of this is on a separate layer, so I can take care of things later. If I want to make adjustments without 
in any way worrying about refilling stuff or um, messing up the line art layer and things like that, okay? The beauty of reference layer fill, it really is a very useful, very useful um, tool. I use it all the time. It's, const it's a constant feature in my work, honestly. Okay, so we can move on from this um, creature right here. I will release this from reference, release reference, and uh, we'll tuck these together. Nice little group, they'd be friends. And let's go ahead and make a new layer and draw another monster, okay? Medium jitter, we're still working with that. We can go ahead and switch it up. Let's go to our jitter brushes and try heavy. Nice. Make it a little bigger. And I'll pause for questions. Let's see here, any questions? You finally understand what that is for now. Ah, yes, Melissa. Oh, you know, um, gosh. Since I was just talking about it, I may as well quickly, quickly, quickly show you with pixel brushes how it works. I think that's really important. This show is all about fresco, and I do have a specific thing in mind when I do the show, and today it's these vector outline and jitter brushes, but always love to point out features that are real time savers, really handy. So let's do that, okay? I'm using the, um, the Belgian comics brush here, one of my all-time faves. This is a pixel brush, okay? It's important to mention. This guy. And let's go ahead and make it a reference layer right here. Set as reference. Okay. We'll make another layer. Just put that underneath it right here. Now, this is different. We're dealing with pixels, right? And as you know, if you've ever drawn in Photoshop, there can be issues with filling with the paint bucket tool where you go, hey, wait a second. Um, I see an issue here where I draw something and I try and fill it with color, but there are these white and gray pixels that show up and make me angry. So, um, let's take care of that right now. Let's take care of that. So I tap to fill. Uh, with my, sorry, with my paint bucket. And there they are, those horrible white and gray pixels, right? I don't want those. Okay, what do I do? Well, as soon as you tap to fill, this is what you do. This is what you do. Move the color margin up until you see those go away. Okay, look over here. Now you see them, now you don't. Okay, so make sure they disappear. And when you're happy with that nice little color fill there, Boom, just like that. You can keep drawing with confidence, or filling rather, with confidence, knowing that 
everything from that point forward will use those same settings and all those gray and white pixels will be eliminated, everything's being trapped correctly, okay? Tap, 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 easy peasy, okay? That's great. We just keep going and tapping to fill. I can even uh, use like a lighter color in here like that. And we'll do some blue eyes, why not, you know? Grab some of that yellow, tap that in there, ba-boom. And let's hide our line art for a second and see what happened. There you go, look at that, look at that. All gone, okay? So we have kept our line art separate from our color, and this is the dream, this is the goal. All right, we can group those together in a good shape. Um, I test drove something the other day in an internal build of Fresco from the team that was so cool and I can't wait for us to get it out there and I hope it happens really soon because I'm very impatient, I always am. But I'll tell you right now what it was just so you can get excited. Um, basically, ungroup this for a second. I had elements on six different layers and I just took my lasso tool like this and selected them and I was able to move and transform the parts of all of those layers simultaneously that were selected and those layers still stayed separate. It was so great, such a great feature. Um, that's coming, it's on the way, I can tell you right now. Yes, that's right, Clever Sneaks. Sneaks, sneaks, sneaks. Aren't sneaks fun? So fun to know what's coming down the road. Anywho, all right, now you know how these work, okay? Let's uh, head on over here and go back to our vector brushes. Got our nice heavy jitter brush right there, all right? And we're just going to do something really quickly here. I want you to see something fun, okay? So I'm just gonna go like this. myself a nice little silhouette for a dragon. One of the keys to making these fun is, is you know, vary your line weight. See that? Like, thicker, thinner. The jitter is going to do some of that, but to be able to, you know, make make things a little thinner here, a little thicker there, that goes a long way, I think. Thinner across here, right? That kind of stuff. So what I wanted to do, um, A couple things here but the main thing I wanted to show you before we run out of time and I know we're getting close here is this check it out let's go to our hollow brushes or our outline brushes if you will and I'm gonna grab a medium outline brush okay it's about this chunky see that and here's what I want to show you that's so neato because of that vector trimming stuff watch this I'm gonna go like this oops draw and hold for a minute and that gives me a nice uh, zip line draw and hold Gives me a zip line, draw and hold. Right, I keep getting these nice zip lines. I can draw these straight lines, draw and hold. Okay. And I just keep on doing this. And I don't have to be perfect, but, but here's what I love. Now I take my vector trimming mode, right? And I just come on through here, and I come on through here, and through here. I didn't mean to knock that little bit out there. Oops, hang on, here we go. 
I actually trimmed off the wrong little bits, but you will understand what I'm doing here in a second. It's okay if, it, if I didn't get it perfect. Um, to be able to do this kind of thing where I draw myself like a nice little window, you know what I'm saying? And I could have done this with some jitter if I wanted to, to keep it consistent with the style. And then have, you know, inside there, uh, the, uh, whoops, the person who sees the dragon. You know, I think that's so cool that you can do stuff like that. I just think that's so neat. To be able to carve through stuff, cut through stuff, get precise where you need to be precise, and all that business, you know, that's just really cool. So, have fun with these, enjoy yourselves. There's so much you can do. Um, these really are fun and special, and they're vector brushes, so, you know, can't go wrong with that. So anyway, thanks for joining me, folks. Hope you had a good time, and um, I'll look the cameras back, whatever, it doesn't work on that one shot. I hope you have a great, great rest of the week. Thanks for joining me for Let's Go Fresco. More to come. Check out the tutorials in the app and elsewhere. I'll see you next time. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And remember to be kind. Ciao for now.